Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies. Um, this is indeed, a, you know, we talk about an historic time. It is a historic time. Um, we are living through unprecedented times uh, and it takes tough and strong people to live successfully in this season. And especially for you who are at the cusp of your lives, your adult lives, and certainly at the beginning of your tertiary education adventure, uh, it, this is going to stretch you a bit. Uh, but you are well able because there's a sense in which this is your time, it is your season, and it is your, it is your time. And I, we hope that UWI and particularly our department is the place in which you will bloom so let me now uh, put on a, a little PowerPoint presentation. Uh, there we go. Right. Oh, I, I need to share my screen. Right. Is everyone is everyone seeing me and hearing me? So I'm going to speak a bit about the Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies. Um, the, the focus of my talk this morning, I'm going to look at the key staff members and the structure of the department, what we offer, some basic information about our full-time and part-time programs, our majors and our minors, uh, something about how we conduct lectures and tutorials. And most important, I think the most important part of what I'm going to say today is strategies for online study and how you can get help to guide you through this season. Um, You're going to meet all of these fine people because they are all on camera. So I am Paula Morgan, as, as indicated. Uh, my field is, is literature and culture. Uh, we have the Literatures in English undergraduate coordinator waiting to come on next, Dr. Elizabeth Jackson the Communication Studies Undergraduate Coordinator, Ms. Latoya Bartholomew, and we have the Undergraduate Coordinator for Cultural Studies, Dr. Susan Burke. Other persons that you need to know, we have the Administrator, Ms. Adele Bain, that you will need to know during the course of, the, of your degree. And for the moment, um, the Clerical Assistance in the LCCF is being offered by Mr. Johan Bennett. So these are the important members of staff that you need to be aware of at this stage. And it, our, our department is as named. We offer majors and minors in literary studies, communication studies, and cultural studies. Right. You're not going to be on, this is particularly for the incoming students. For the most part, you will not be on campus, but should you need to come, you're, you will need to have a sense of where we are. And we are close to one of the most important buildings in the university. We are close to the library. Uh, so we are the building next to the library with the big, huge clock. We cannot miss it if you come through the, high, the gate from the highway, the southern entrance to the university. So the faculty office is on the second floor of the humanities building. And the Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies is on the third floor. All of our offices, academic offices, secretarial, administrative and technical are all found in one place. And as you come up the stairway that is next to the library, you will meet the departmental office where uh, you will find Mr. Bennett and uh, nearby you will find Ms. Bean. So we hope that we don't know how things are going to go, but we just felt that you needed to know that we exist in a physical place. So some basics about your degree. If you are registered full-time, the expectation is that you will take five courses per semester for three years. If you are registered part-time, the expectation is that you will take three courses per semester for a longer period and you're not going to finish in three years. Of course, there is the opportunity for part-time regist registrants as well as full-time registrants to, to take uh, courses during the mid-year program or the summer program and thereby expedite the course of your degree. Oh, I, I want to say that if you have questions, 
general questions, please put it on the chat and we do have staff members standing by who may be able to answer your questions. If they are very specific questions which are going to be answered in the academic advising program, you will be told that um, those issues will be settled later. But just in case there are other questions, people are standing by to answer your questions. In terms of the major, um, the major is the degree subject in your acceptance letter. Now, I know some of you may have applied for something and have been accepted for something else. Please be sure that you register for the major as reflected in your acceptance letter. When you enter the academic advising room, you'll be asked to, to show or to indicate what is the subject on your acceptance letter and you will therefore major in that subject. Now, there are specific requirements for each degree subject and a mixture of both compulsory courses and elective courses. I am not going to go into that. When you get into academic advising, you will be told about the specific requirements. A major has specific requirements. We do have situations of people coming to the end, having done a bit of this and done a bit of that, but they have not done the courses that are required for the granting of their degree. And that is why academic advising is so important because you'll be told exactly what is required for your major. You may also opt to do a minor. This is optional and you can choose which minor and declare the minor. So your university certificate will indicate that you have done a major in this and a minor. So this is a program of study, a minor in another subject area, which has its own requirements. It tends to be fewer. I know, for example, for literatures in English, the minor requires five courses or 15 credits. In other programs, it may differ. So again, in academic advising, you can find out about majors and minors. Um, pointers for selecting your elective courses. So you do have a major. There are preliminary courses that you have to do to satisfy your major, but then you have electives. And persons are sometimes interested in pursuing other tertiary level study interests. So you need to have a sense at the beginning of your program of what you might be interested in pursuing, because then you need the entry level courses or the level one courses that will allow you in the third year to pick up something. So you cannot pick up a linguistics course in the third year without having an entry level course in linguistics. And that goes across the board. So you need to have a sense of your interest from now to ensure that in your electives, you have the level one courses that will allow you to pursue your interests subsequently. You may also select out of faculty courses, but first you have to fulfill the quota for your major as well as other required faculty courses and foundation courses. Right, so lectures and tutorials, usually two hours a week, led by the lecturer, but interactive. But we do have the benefit in our system of still having small group, highly interactive teaching, where the, your lecturer or your tutor is there to guide you but largely, this is the time that you participate, you speak, you present, you participate fully in the teaching process. So in that tutorial process, it is your time to, to, um, to ask your questions, settle your issues. It's very important that you attend your tutorials. Right, now just a little brief couple of statements about learning online. None of us asked for this. Many of you, when you dreamt of coming to university, you saw yourself in orientation week, um, getting behind the mic and singing and dancing and doing your stuff. And, uh, but we are now in a different environment and we have, to, we have to, to enjoy all the benefits of the different environment. And what I think that we will find, I think we are already finding that the different environment is providing different opportunities. So one of the first things you must do is understand the online environment. 
the online learning may be more convenient. For example, you don't have to dress in your very best, put on your shoes and spend money to come to the campus. It, there are conveniences, but it is not easier. It in fact requires a greater level of concentration and it requires disciplined focus. You need to fully commit yourself to participate in the virtual classroom. And if you are not an internet native, one of the young people who, who came to an understanding of self within an online environment, if, if you're like me, then you have to become tech savvy in order to fully participate in the online environment. So you need to engage with your learning, check your timetable, work out a study schedule, prepare in advance for all online seminars and lectures. Do your reading beforehand. Take notes, ask questions, actively participate in the process. Ensure that you have the right tools for study, a well-functioning computer, and a good internet connection. And if you do not have those tools, please let us in the department and in the faculty and in the university know. The, the principal and the management team of the university, they're very aware that not all students have adequate tools. So please let us know if you do not have adequate tools. Additionally, because of the, the, the focus on online learning, more of your resources will be available digitally because the expectation is you're not going to get into the library to get the books and texts. So access becomes all the more important. Also, given the nature of the online environment, there is a kind of immediacy about it. The understanding is that people are going to access things far more immediately. So you must check online, your online portal daily for updates on classes and study tools. Just because you're online does not mean that you cannot enjoy community. So you need to use your online tools to set up study groups, analyze texts, swap study tips. Also, there all, there's a wealth of information available on the internet that you can, that, that you can, you know, in the past, we had, we used to set assignments. We would say, go out on the net and select sites and assess these sites to see, to see what they're saying about the author, about, about this communication style, about that cultural phenomenon. Now it becomes even uh, easier, I think, since this is how you're learning to avail yourself of the opportunities that are available online. Do not get isolated. Please encourage as much collaboration as possible, but just a little warning, separate your study time and your lining time so that you're not spending all the time that you're supposed to be studying doing your heavy lining. Keep in touch with your lecturers. Apart from lecture hours and tutorial hours, there are going to be office consultation hours. Every single lecturer is going to hold consultation hours. Find out if the office hours are set or if they are by appointment. And please alert your lecturers and tutors if you are feeling lost or distressed. Just a couple more pointers. Create a workspace that suits you. Now, I know that this isn't always possible. Not everybody has a study or create a corner, create a, a a desk service, as simple as it may seem, this would be very important. If it is at all possible, make sure that this place is quiet and organized. Don't settle down to work and then you're looking for a pen, you're looking for a pencil, you cannot find the pad because you, you, you're, you're at the dining room table. If there is any little corner that you can carve out and any way that you can negotiate with the other members of your household or if you have to go down by a friend or by whatever that you have to do. Negotiate a space and also respect for the way that you work. And now this is a big deal because in this time we tell ourselves that we can multitask. I tell myself that and sometimes it doesn't always work. So this is a big deal to ask you to please turn off your phones 
and to log off your social network so as to focus on your work. If absolutely necessary, access can be arranged for space on campus. You can have some access to come to campus to, to, to have a space, but this is only if absolutely necessary. And this is of course subject to the government guidelines as, as in terms of what is safe. Plan your day, take regular breaks, and allow a lifestyle that is based exclusively on screens. Because in the past, you know, exercise happened outside, cooking happened by, by looking through cookbooks. Uh, these days, everything is screen-based, and that level of, of um, attention to screens and contact to screens, I believe, may have a deleterious effect eventually. You also need to have a clear cutoff point when you finish studying for the day. So what have I said? Build a study plan, have an effective calendar system, create to-do lists, set time limits. And this is a good tip. Intersperse high concentration tasks with mechanical tasks so that when you're, you're feeling that you can't focus, then do mechanical things, things that you need to organize and plan. Those are mechanical. You may not be able at, at that point to do things that require high concentration, but please stay on schedule. Stay motivated, maintain a healthy lifestyle, reward yourself by when you have completed a task, give yourself a reward and create time for yourself. Right, okay, so those are your online study tips. Now let us talk a bit about plagiarism. This has become a serious issue at the university. So much so sometimes we feel that students don't even know when they're plagiarizing. Maybe they feel if they find something online that then it's theirs and, and therefore they can use it. So and it is also a problem when values have changed. We had very clear values as to, as to what was honest and what was not honest. And sometimes in, in this time, those values have become woolly uh, and people are not necessarily on the whole having the same dedication to truth. I can tell you that plagiarism devalues you. And if you are to get the best of your university experience, you must value your own creativity and value your capacity to learn. If you keep pace with or ahead of the class, then you won't feel pressured and you feel that you have to cut a corner. Do not copy material without inserting quotation marks. Do not paraphrase material that belongs to somebody else without identifying the source. Just this week, I learned of a situation where the University of London had to cancel one of his exams because the exams were happening online and it became clear from how people were looking beyond the camera that people were looking at, the, the assumption was that people were looking at material that was outside of the range of the camera and that they were copying. Uh, we are entering a new world. There are ways to exist and to be creative and to be respectful of your capacity in this world, do not short circuit yourself. And finally, this is my final statement. If you need help, help is available. If you need help, the Writing Center can help with language and writing skills. Also, if you have disabilities, sometimes learning disabilities, sometimes of visual impairment. The Division of Student Services and Development can help with practical issues. Also, if the season, this season is putting you under undue stress and you find that you are unable to cope, student counseling and psychological services are available to help you to cope in this time. So I hope that this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please send them to the chat and we will try to assist you over to Dr. Amaye.
for the rest of the program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Morgan. Okay, so that was a lot of information and don't panic, okay? <laughs> the things that you need to take away from this is that we're here to give you guidance, okay? One of the main things is that you need to be responsible for your learning. And all the other technical things, you will find them in the undergraduate handbook that's available for you online. Okay, so now I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Elizabeth Jackson, who's the undergraduate coordinator for Literatures in English. Thank you very much, Dr. Amaye, and thank you, Professor Morgan. Um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Literatures in English program very brief, not just for literatures and English majors, but for communication studies majors too, and cultural studies students, because you're all welcome to take literatures in English courses. I'm, there, there is quite a lot of information on my slides. I, I'm not going to go through it in great detail. I'm mainly going to focus on what you need to, to know now in your first year as first year students. You have chosen a very good degree to do uh, because it will prepare you for any any career that you choose to do in the, the future, whether it's, it's, it's publishing, journalism, uh, advertising, banking, law, teaching, and, and anything really. Sorry, I'm, this is uh, um, because it will teach you to think creatively and independently and imaginatively and to communicate your ideas effectively. Employers value that. Um, but if you want to do a if you want to teach English in Trinidad and Tobago, the Ministry of Education requires that you uh, either do a major in literatures and English and a minor in linguistics, or a major in linguistics and a minor in literatures in English, or a, a double major, or the English language and literature with education degree. You must study linguistics in addition to literature if you want to maybe keep, keep your options open for teaching. Uh, it's something for you to discuss during academic uh, advising. You might want to try a linguistics course and see whether you want to minor in it. Okay. Um, beyond that, your choices are up to you. Um, we have three in introductory literatures in English courses uh, for all majors and all minors. These are compulsory courses that you must do. They are good. They serve as a good foundation for any further literature courses that you do. One of them is Introduction to Prose Fiction in the first semester. I teach that. Uh, the other one is Elements of Drama, also in the first semester, taught by Dr. Skeet. Uh, in, in the second semester, you do is introduction to poetry. And at level one, you do five further level one courses in other disciplines, at least two of which must be in humanities. Okay. Um, you also have to do two academic writing courses um, this will all be explained to you during academic advising. I'm just giving you an overview, a, a sort of roadmap. That is, if you have the grade pre prerequisites for these um, writing courses. If, if you don't, you must first pass the English language proficiency test. You should arrange this as soon as possible. Okay. Um, I'm not going to take you through the level two courses. They're, if they're just listed here, you can come back to the slides later. They'll be uh, available to you. Worry about them next year, maybe. Um, and there are a few required level three courses also. And in addition to the required courses, you also, ha you also have many, many electives of options for electives. You, you must take further, four further literatures in English courses at, at levels two and, and three. Okay. Um, for the minor in literatures in English, you do your three foundation courses, introduction to poetry, introduction to prospection, elements of drama. 
you do a course in Shakespeare, one course in West Indian literature, and three further literatures in English. Um, now we have we have wonderful <laughs> elective courses in the truth in English. I've I have have grouped them into regional um, categories. We have we have British and multi-regional uh, literature courses, uh, courses in North American literature, uh, courses in in literature of Africa and the African diaspora. You won't be surprised to hear our greatest strength as a department is Caribbean literature. Many options for you there in addition to the compulsory courses. Uh, there are elective uh, courses in literature of South Asia and the South Asian diaspora. We've got some fabulous creative writing courses and some interdisciplinary uh, courses involving uh, literature and other subjects. So I've I've taken you you through that very quickly because I don't want to blind you with science at this stage. You're just looking ahead a little bit. Um, you will be getting to know your literatures and English lecturers. You've already met P Professor Morgan, our head of department. Myself, I'm the coordinator of the, of the undergraduate literatures and English program this year. The coordinator of the postgraduate literatures in, in English program is Dr. Miraj. There's there's Dr. Skeet, um, a, a deputy dean for, for student affairs, whom you will meet early in your program probably. Dr. Amaye, who is our moderator, is the coordinator of the creative writing program. Dr. Brown, Dr. Mr. Gibson and Jennifer Rahim, you will meet all of us, maybe not face to face, but certainly online and we are all there for you. We are all there to support you. We are well aware of the challenges of teaching and learning online and we're, we're going to, to make the best of it together. Um, as Professor Morgan emphasized the lecturers and tutors are there to provide support and guidance, but you are responsible for your own learning. Dr. Amaye said this also. There's a reason we're called lecturers rather than um, teachers. We don't teach you, we support your learning and we help you. Uh, my most important tip to you is to join each lecture and tutorial on time, having read the set text in advance. If you remember nothing else that I say in my presentation, please remember you must do the reading before you join the lectures and tutorials. You will get the most out of it if you do. Um, a list of the set text uh, for each course is available several months in advance on our Literatures in English at UE Facebook page. Even if you're not, if you're like me and you don't really do Facebook, you can still join the Literatures in English at UE Facebook page and get access to the list of books because you should start reading now. But if literature is reading intensive. You're doing a literature degree because you enjoy reading and now is, is the time to, to start because once the semester begins you'll be busy and you'll, you'll be glad to get a head start before teaching begins. Okay. Um, I think uh, Professor Morgan emphasized these points about asking questions, participating in class, that discussions, being aware of plagiarism, and making use of the writing center if you need help with writing skills. Um, and there are many ways to engage with literatures in English at UE. As, I've, as we've all been uh, emphasizing, your uh, lecturers are uh, available for, for individual support and assistance during office hours or by appointment. There is a staff student liaison com committee meeting every semester serving as a discussion forum for your views on our courses and programs. This year they will be online. Um, there's the Literatures in English uh, page on, on the UE website. There's our, our Facebook page, the Literatures in English at UE. We have many, we've always had many 
events and activities throughout the academic year. This year they will be online, but I want to call your attention, especially to our annual campus literature week, uh, usually in, in March. We have creative writers um, reading their works. Um, I think it's, it's one of the best things that happens at UWE. Um, so I am finished. I will hand back over to Dr. Amaye. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. So I think that we had a lot of important information then and a lot of it you will go over again when you go to your academic advising. And I think it's really important. And I just wanted to add here because both um, of our previous speakers have talked about plagiarism and you might be sitting there thinking, I don't know what that is. That's okay. Somebody just muted me for some reason. <laughs> there are no questions um, that you can ask us that would not be sensible or that we would think were pointless. If you are unsure of anything, we are here. You ask the question. You can ask it privately. You can ask it in a group. It doesn't matter. Always check with us. That's what we're here for. Okay, and now I'm going to introduce you to Ms. Latoya Bartholomew, who is the Communication Studies Moderator. Over to you, Latoya. Thank you, Dr. Amaye. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm just trying to share this screen with you all. Right, so um, let me begin by extending to you a warm welcome to the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus, but more so the LCCS department. The Communication Studies BA program uh, provides a broad introduction to many different fields of human communication. It offers you an opportunity to sharpen your analytical and problem solving skills, and it also presents you with an opportunity to pursue a career or a graduate um, degree in communication, journalism, public relations, and marketing, just to name a few. Now, as communication studies majors, you must attain a total of 90 credits over a three-year period if you are a full-time student, and if you are a part-time student, you have at least five years to do so. So now let's take a look at your level one requirements. My screen is ticking. Right, so at level one, you have to attain 30 credits or you have to do 10 courses. Of these 10 courses, two are core communication studies courses. This semester, you will be taking COMS 1101, Introduction to Human Communication. Uh, you must successfully complete this particular course to advance to the semester two offering, which is COMS 1102. You also need two FHE or Faculty of Humanities and Education Foundation courses. So this semester, there is FOUND 1001 or FOUND 1106. And as Dr. Jackson um, suggested just now, we have certain prerequisites that will suggest us which foundation course you must take. So for example, if you have um, a one or two in communication studies, you will read FOUND 1106, but don't worry, we will guide you through that um, decision when we meet with you at academic advising. To wrap up your level one requirements, you have six electives, two of which must be from the Faculty of Humanities and Education. And this is where I like to tell students we need to think smart. And we need to think smart because you have free choice, but we want to choose courses that will help make you more marketable. So for instance, you may want to consider building a minor in film. Let's say you have a particular interest in mass communication or journalism. You will need to take the level one film courses, which will help you to build a minor. Um, if you have a particular interest 
in working in international organizations like WHO or PAHO, for example, you may want to consider building a minor in international relations. So uh, there is a social sciences course called Gov 1000, I believe, that will be your prerequisite to help you build your minor. With respect to your level two courses, again, we have 30 credits or 10 courses, four of which are core communication studies courses. Um, in semester one, we have COMS 2001 and COMS 2101. COMS 2001 is the prerequisite for your semester two course, COMS 2002 or communication analysis. So you must successfully complete COMS 2001 to gain entry into COMS 2002. Again, we have two FHE foundation courses, which you must do. Um, in this particular instance, these two courses that I have listed there, they're usually both offered at the same time. So you get to choose which semester you would prefer to do the respective found course. Finally, you have four electives to wrap up your level two requirements, two of which must be from the communication studies section. Now, if you look at the faculty booklet, you will see the complete list of all the different communication studies electives that you can choose from. And the other two would be those courses that will help you to build your minor. With respect to level three, again, 30 credits, but this time nine courses, three core communication studies courses. Um, we have a year long course, come state in 99, and here students do research over a, an academic year um, investigating some communication problem. You will then present your findings at our Communication Research Expo, where we invite the wider, uh, the wider university community to participate and also members of the general public. To wrap up your level three requirements, we have six electives. One must be a level three elective. And you will know a level three elective because it will start with the number three. So just as you're seeing comes 3099, that number three indicates to you that this is a level three elective. With respect to our minor, and this is where I want to speak specifically to the literatures and English majors. Um, we have found in the past that communication studies, the communication studies minor is a very popular minor for literatures and English students. So for this minor, you have the four core courses at level two, and you get to choose one of our electives. Now, you may not necessarily at this point in time know for certain that you want to pursue a minor in communication. So I will invite you to take comms 1101 this semester. And I like to say it's like killing two birds with one stone. So you get one of your FHE um, level one requirements and you also get a taste of what the communication studies minor will expose you to. So some of our electives, the more popular ones, um, in particular students, are put, they are very interested in the public relations communication course or even intercultural communication. So as I said, in the faculty booklet, you will have a full list of all the electives that we offer you. As Dr. Mai uh, began off with, I am the the undergrad communication studies coordinator, but I'm also your lecturer. So I will be working alongside these three brilliant um, young individuals. We have Ms. Gray Hospitalis, who is one of our senior tutors, sorry. Um, she has been working here for at least five years, doing tutorials in all our undergraduate communication studies program. She has a MSc in marketing. Ms. Kamiko Scott, she too has a master's uh, degree in communication for social and behavior change. And she has worked both at Mona and more recently at the St. Augustine campus. And finally, Isaiah Williams, he's a graduate of the communication studies program. He's currently completing his MSc in project management. And he has approximately six years experience, professional experience in the areas of corporate comp and marketing. So this takes me to the end of my presentation, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer and assist as much as I can. So you can contact me at latoya.bartholomew at sda.uwi.edu 
or Latoya Bartholomew at gmail.com. Thank you all. Back to you, Dr. Mae. Thank you, Latoya. That was all very clear, very crisp, and I'm sure that the students took everything that they needed from there. And of course, in academic advising, they'll go over it again and get help with their electives. So thank you for that. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Suzanne Burke, who is the um, coordinator for cultural studies. Thank you, everyone. Can everyone see? Yes? Okay. So as I said, good morning, everyone. And it's indeed my pleasure to be here. I am going to talk this morning about our minor in cultural studies, which was introduced about two years ago. Um, and it adds to the basket of options that students who come to the LCCS department have to take. So I wanted to um, begin with a testimonial from one of our students um, to give a sense of what cultural studies is about and what you can gain from pursuing a minor in cultural studies. So cultural studies seeks to engage the practices, the institutions and systems of classification that help us as human beings develop certain values, certain beliefs and routines so that we understand ourselves a little better. So in studying, in doing a minor in cultural studies, you would be able to analyze and understand more clearly the forms of power that operate within our society. And some examples of the fields that you would be looking at include gender and sexuality, race and ethnicity, class and color. And in doing those things, you are able to explore these connections and you are also able to understand them more clearly so that you can effect um, change around issues of social justice, power and equity. So what knowledge and skills would you get if you seek a minor in cultural studies? Well, you would of course have to know about theories of culture, you would also have the ability to analyze and interpret different aspects of your society. And of course, the ability to critically evaluate cultural data, right? Music, visual arts, performing arts, um, things that we do every day, going to the mall, shopping, those kinds of things, scanning the net, being on Instagram, all of those things that make up a part of your daily and everyday life. And in so doing, you will be able to uh, improve your communication skills and you will have the capacity to work with people from a variety of backgrounds. So having said that and having given you a sense of the knowledge and skills that you will acquire by taking a minor in cultural studies, what does this minor entail? 
Well, it is a 15 credit uh, minor and you have to do four core courses. The first CLTR 2150 is called the Introduction to Cultural Studies. It is a year long course. And in that course, you are um, introduced to all the various theories and concepts around um, the study of cultural studies, which is a very interdisciplinary field in that we draw from communication, literature, um, political science, gender, political economy, international relations. So it is really transdisciplinary. And this introduction to cultural studies introduces you to the various schools and disciplines, concepts and theories that make up cultural studies. The second core course is CLTR 3100, which looks specifically at how cultural studies is applied or can be applied to the Caribbean context. It's called Theorizing Caribbean Culture. The other core course is CLTR 3101, which looks at race, culture, and nationalism, and that you take in semester two um, of your first year. I want to say here that there are no prerequisites to any of the courses, so um, you don't have to do anything to come, and all the courses are 100% coursework. The fourth and final course has to be an elective, and here I have up some of the choices that we suggest um, that you take, but of course that is contingent on exactly what aspect of cultural studies you may be interested in. So we have um, anthropology um, courses, we have um, theater courses, so critical readings in Caribbean arts and culture, there are film courses, Caribbean cinema, um, one and two, there are gender courses, feminist theoretical frameworks, gender, ethnicity and class, issues of identity, nature and citizenship. And then of course there's CLTR 310 Two, which looks particularly at our visual cultures and that course is known as exhibiting cultures. Um, you may pursue another elective, um, a, a second or third year elective from another um, faculty, but you would have to first consult with um, the uh, faculty before you proceed. So the elective um, is, is, is fairly open once um, there is prior consultation and approval. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, in cultural studies, there are a range of things you can do with a minor. Um, and I have listed some of those things here. You can work in a gallery, a museum. You can become an art administrator as it gives you that ability to critique um, art, visual art, and the art that is all around you. You can get into marketing, journalism, um, government policy, because we touch on a little bit of that. We also look at community and community-based issues. So that's something you could do as well. Um, it also arms you with the skill to become a very good researcher or teacher. Um, and of course, depending on your interests, an artist or practitioner. So the range of options that are available to you are certainly um, not limitless, but there are many. And so it is really something that we um, would encourage you to consider. So for the upcoming semester, semester one of this new academic year, um, both of your courses, CLTR 2150 and CLTR 3100, are going to be anchored by Ms. Deborah Matthews, and she will be available in one of the breakout rooms after the session to answer any questions or concerns that you may have in pursuing a minor in cultural studies. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. Um, for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burke. As you can see that there is so much synergy between all the sections in the Department of Literary Culture and Communication Studies. So it's quite exciting that once you come into our department, you have lots and lots of choices. Okay, so I think somebody's I've sharing. Stop the sharing. Screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. I need to do that. Just a sec. My computer is okay. sticking for some reason. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we are actually going to take you into the LCCS department um, with a short video that will take you around and show you what we would 
be walking you around where we're able to do that. So enjoy. Sean Dell and Jassy. Um, the name of our group is Reading Between the Lines and We Did an Analysis of the Portrayal of the PSA in um, the PSA in Trinidad and Tobago, um, Guardian and Express, and how um, the public's perception was affected by their portrayal um, between the time period of 2015 to 2017. Hi, my name is Alyssa Huggins, and I'm here with my group entitled Equ Equality, and we're finally a communication studies student, and we're doing our research for thesis project for our final year. And our topic is an investigation into the language used in the Trinidad and Tobago Express newspapers to represent the LGBTQI community and what effect that has on public perception and then what effect that so has on the community. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tobrona Nelson. On my far right, we have Rawson Rigsby. My right, Amy Ramkison. On my left, um, Alicia Butt. Uh, we're here to present to you a research that focuses mainly on the challenges members of the deaf community face here in Trinidad whenever they aim to seek uh, healthcare services from healthcare institutions uh, via healthcare providers. Um, Thank you. As you can see, you are coming into a very diverse and a very exciting department, and I'm excited for you. Okay, so now we're going to actually um, meet some students and some student representatives. Um, we're going to have some interviews, and I'll introduce them as they come up, but it's just to let you know what's coming. So, in their own voices, 
Um, we first have an interview with Gerard Bess from Communication Studies. Somebody has the interview somewhere. Um, Dr. Okay. Mani, I will I will check on that. Maybe we can introduce Mr. Balchan Prasad. Yes, I think we'll go on. Um, so, from communication studies, the representative is Mr. Balchan Prasad, and he's going to have a few words for us. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, moderator. So I am basically going to talk, speak about the CSA, which is the Communication Students Association. Um, it's a student-led um, association on campus. Um, it's a registered club, one of the, um, a registered club with the Guild of Students, um, and it is affiliated with the Department of LCCS at UE. Um, basically, our mission at, of the CSA is to bridge the gap between theory taught in class and practicality. So basically what, what that means is um, the CSA provides mutual academic support from current and uh, former students. Um, we try to create a sense of community among the communication studies program. And we try to encourage the participation of our members and the communication studies students through creative, meaningful and stimulating activities. So throughout the semester, um, the CSA will plan and execute uh, different uh, seminars and programs that um, would be beneficial to you as communication studies uh, students and by extension uh, other students of the department as well. Um, so it's a really fun and interactive club um, to, to join. It will count towards your extracurricular activity at the university as well. Um, um, because of the changes we have of COVID, um, we may not have physical um, we may not have physical programs and stuff like that. So we are currently working on how that is gonna happen. Um, just to note, I am the outgoing president. Um, this is my final year, I'm graduating this year. Um, so you will see a fresh new face. Um, you, you will receive more information on that. But basically you can look at us as we are your voice in terms of you know, if you, if you need any extra help with anything, if you feel uh, more comfortable speaking to us than your lecturers on anything, you can come to us, you can send us an email and uh, concerning anything. And we can liaise with the lecturers, with the head of department and stuff like that to sort your situation out and make you feel more comfortable. Um, so if you all have any questions for me um, concerning the CSA, the Communication Studies Association, you can send me an email at comstudiesassociation at gmail.com. I will type it in the chat so you all can get it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you all. Thank you, Belchan. That was some really interesting information. And it's nice to know that we're still creating that sense of community, even though we're online. Next, I'm going to in introduce um, Student Association Rep in Literatures and English, and that's Amanda Zilla. Are you with us, Amanda? Hi, good morning. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Maie. Good morning to the head of the Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies, Professor Paula Morgan, all teaching, administrative and technical staff present, and to our new students, congratulations on being accepted into, into the Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies. My role this morning is to introduce you all to a new student-led initiative, the DLCCS Virtual Student Association aimed at helping you transition into university life as easily as possible. With class delivery occurring online, the opportunity to get to know your peers is an entirely different experience, and adjusting to your academic demands within a virtual educational experience bears challenges of its own. Having recognized the elimination of in-person communication among students, 
and the difficulty this poses to your personal development and the adjustments. Myself and two postgraduate students, Mr. Akim Alexis and Mrs. Maxine Ferreira, decided to create and implement this association. This online platform, whose website is targeted to be available during October, presents students with the opportunity to interact with each other via targeted discussions and forums moderated by the committee, virtual game nights, updates regarding virtual campus activities, academic and organizational resources, and study and writing tips. For students at the postgraduate level, this support system includes the posting of conference and journal calls for papers. By creating a platform that caters to both undergraduate and postgraduate students, we also hope to provide student mentorship services to the undergraduates, which can be requested via an, via an online form, which will be available on our website. Overall, our aim is to ensure that an integrated student experience is not absent from a virtual semester. We are here to assist students in getting the most out of their undergraduate and postgraduate experiences by encouraging them to utilize their analytical skills outside of the traditional classroom environment, to critically assess all forms of art, society, and culture, and most importantly, to get to know other students whom you'll be sharing experiences with for the next three years. We do hope that all of you will look out for information on this platform in the coming weeks, especially a proposed calendar of events. More importantly, we hope you join us as we work towards creating an unforgettable semester together. Back to you, Dr. Maye. Thank you, Amanda. That was some great information. I think we're now going to go to the video um, of Gerard Best, an interview. Thank you. Jared Best. I graduated in 2003 from the University of the West Indies St. Augustine Campus, Faculty of Humanities and Education. I did a double major in French and Linguistics and subsequently went to France to teach English to secondary school students as part of the, um, the French Ministry of Education program. Um, that was facilitated by the university and that was a lasted a few months and one of the things that stayed with me from that program was it immediately gave me a sense of the global application of the skills and the knowledge that I'd gained during my undergraduate um, program. I enrolled a second time at the faculty to do a master, uh, master's degree um, in human communication studies and my, the focus of that degree, my thesis was in journalism ethics. Um, while studying there, I also did a postgraduate diploma in development journalism at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, which is in New Delhi. I spent uh, a total of about four and a half months in New Delhi studying the fundamentals of development journalism. It was an experience that taught me again the global relevance of the things that I'd learned in my local context. So at, at both stages of my UE journey, I've had the benefit, the privilege of um, being enrolled in a local program and then having what I've learned in the local program immediately applied to a more global context. I'm a development journalist and a data nerd. I work with data to find stories that are relevant to development issues. I was online editor um, just across the street at Caribbean Communications Network at the Trinidad Express newspapers. Actually, when I got back from India, um, at that time, I was employed at the Marketing and Communications Office at UE St. Augustine campus, and I was doing work with the office of the campus principal at the time. I actually went from studying journalism 
to working alongside um, the coordinator of the UE's journalism program to being an editor here in the local media and practicing journalism. The truth is that the skills that I learned at the University of West Indies have served me well as a, as a, as a practicing journalist in the local media. Um, UE is a place where I've learned the foundational elements of, of journalism. Um, it's an environment in which you are forced to learn how to do work on your own. You learn independence and you also learn some of the basics of collaboration that are very important in the journalism environment. I would say that some of the influences that impact me more directly are perhaps outside of the university as well. And generally, um, the work that I do focuses on the wider Caribbean. And through my just being a part of the UE and just being around um, as a marketing and communications officer in particular, the environment of the, um, of the campus being one that's very focused on the Caribbean, I think that's something that has always stayed with me. I think I've developed a passion for Caribbean development in particular. My writing tends to focus on Caribbean development and in particular technology development. Development journalism is journalism that takes a focus on development issues. Issues like health, education, environment and technology. The work of a development journalist is essentially, essentially twofold. To take topics that are significant to national development, significant to regional development, and to find ways to tell stories about those issues that um, make them part of the national conversation. But it's much more focused on trying to understand how something that is happening today, something that is developing right now, how it links into a much bigger picture of development. Um, how a murder that may have taken place in, in some part of the country what is the bigger picture into which that murder falls? How um, individual bits of information can be connected to give a sense of why something is important um, to, to the development agenda of the society. So it tends to track along major issues like health or the environment or um, technology, education, and to understand how individual stories form a part of those much bigger, larger stories. One of the things that I think the journalism industry in general needs more of is the ability to attract people who are um, experts from different fields, um, people who are experts at content creation, people who are experts in technology, people who are experts in health. I look forward to um, the day in the not too distant future when I will be able to sit alongside university lecturers, to sit alongside people who are graduate students who are doing postgraduate research and to work with them to develop ways in which um, the journalism industry can be developed. I'm Jared Best. Join us at the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Make your stamp today. Okay, and our final um, presenter now from Cultural Studies is Deborah Matthews. Thank you, Dr. Amai. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our new students. My name is Deborah Matthews, and I speak to you now in my capacity as the Communications and Publications Counselor of the UE Cultural Studies Society, or the CSS. The CSS is a student-led organization that was officially launched in May of 2019 and purposed to provide a forum for scholarly dialogue in the discipline of cultural studies. We are also mandated, amongst other things, to develop and maintain an archive of scholarship and creative projects from both current students and alumni and to participate in local, public, and community engagement. Thus far, we have hosted a number of events, most notably a workshop on reparations in the Americas. And we host quite often, though now online via Zoom because of the pandemic, public viewing parties of critically acclaimed documentaries, music videos, and movies. 
Each viewing is followed by a group discussion about the film through concepts such as class, identity, politics, and other relations of power. Why? Because we aim to engage persons to think critically about not only your, day, your everyday life, but to consciously regard the constantly moving forces behind the material that you come into contact with. So actually tomorrow, Tuesday the 25th, the third episode of our ongoing series called Decode is happening. The Decode series addresses current and topical issues faced by the Caribbean and wider diaspora. And tomorrow's dialogue features four panelists who will lead the discussion on the topic, human rights, our right to breathe. Registration for this is actually still open. So I invite you to log on to our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram. Just search on either platform for at Cultural Studies Society to register for Decode and to find out more about the CSS and of course, to see how you can become a member and get involved with us. So again, welcome to the UE and I hope to see some or all of you at Decode tomorrow, God willing. Thank you very much and back over to you, Dr. Mai. Thank you, Deborah. Well, as you can see, we have a community. Even though we are going to be online for this year, there is still that very strong sense that there is something there for you and that we are there for you. From um, Gerard Best's um, video, from his interview, you could see that being part of the UE is being part of one of the best universities that you could be with in the Caribbean. And this is really exciting. It means that you are getting a global education and it means that as you finish your studies, you will be ready to take on the wider Caribbean and the world. So we thank you for being with us today for this orientation. And now I am asking you to go and sign on, go onto the website, the um, FHE website and find the link for academic advising and get yourselves registered and let's start this journey together. Thank you.